nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We had three qualified vendors that uh, responded to the initial uh, specifications being published uh, and attended the mandatory pre-proposal uh, meeting um, and stated that, that they would submit a bid that came from uh, Lutheran, Parkview, and Heartland. Um, and I'm under the impression that those are the three that we've received uh, proposals by the deadline today. Uh, they'll be open uh, by uh, commissioners and the um, overall price uh, will be um, announced. However, I would uh, remind commissioners you're gonna take these proposals under advisement. Um, they'll be assigned to uh, a working committee here in the county for uh, consideration. It involves commissioners, council, and other public safety officials. Um, we're interviewing any uh, vendor who submits a proposal uh, later this week, uh, we'll be doing the county's due diligence and then we're uh, required to submit a recommendation back to uh, commissioners um, by November 6th and um, in an effort to have a contract negotiated with the successful vendor uh, by um, the December 4th uh, meeting. So I have those two go together to talk. I think the one is the letter. Yeah. And you are hoping in this one, Heartland, is that right? This is Heartland.
we have, we have two options on here. The first option is enhanced emergency medical service, uh, service offering three advanced life support ambulances available around the clock every day of the year. One uh, F-154 by four advanced life support Equipped emergency response vehicle, no additional cost. Uh, the monthly cost is 112,000. Annual cost is 1.35 million. Um, contract duration, um, trades guaranteed for initial period of four years, and suing cost periodically, and stability for Fulton County. <coughs> Option two is a standard emergency uh, medical service. Uh, there's two advanced life support ambulances available 24-7, 365 days a year. One F-154 by four advanced life support equipment, equipped emergency response vehicle, no additional cost. Monthly cost is 75,000, annual cost is 900,000. Okay, just so I'm straight, the first one was three ambulances stationed throughout the county and one at the hospital, is that, is that well, the way? It, it doesn't say where it, it says, um, there's three advanced life support on option one. Okay. And then for clarification and the specifications, the no cost would have been the um, ask for uh, interfacility transport um, stage, possibly the one. Okay, okay. Yep. So option one was the, uh, with three ALS ambulances, $112,000 a month. $1,350,000. Option two is uh, standard emergency service, uh, two ALS ambulances, and the F-150 for 75000 a month or $900,000 a year. Understanding that in the other provisions within the specifications, there may be other costs that are identified that are either uh, included in that total cost or may not be included. So we won't know until we do dive into it. Mm -hmm. Which one is that? I'm sorry. Say that again. Which, which of the three is that? Heartland. 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 Setting aside, we were, they were required to have seven uh, of the same packets for the review committee. So that, that's what we're setting aside. And this is Luther. This is Luther. Okay, so for Lutheran, um, contract year number one, they have a uh, no annual stipend. Uh, contract year January 1st to 25, uh, $400,000. Uh, contract year 26, $420,000. Contract year uh, 27 is 421000 and we'll have to dig in to make sure the specs are all met on how we, and there's their check. So the first year is nothing. The second year is 400, 420. 421. Yeah, it doesn't say an explanation of what it is, so we'll just have to look into it and make sure it meets the specifications presented. What was year 26? Um, 26 is 420. Okay. And then 421. Yeah, 421. So we had zero, 400, 420, and 421,000. 
And this is the part of you I take it, right? Yes. that also. So we have year uh, 24, uh, $2.4 million. We have year 25, $1.2 million. We have contract year 26 of $1.2 million. And the contract year 27, $950,000. <coughs> what was the last one? 950000 Does anybody need those repeated? If you would, one more time. Okay. Year 24 is 2.4 million, 25 is 1.2 million, 26 is 1.2 million, and uh, 27 is 950,000. Okay, do we have any questions? Like I said, this is going into advisement. We've got a, a, a committee that will be reviewing these um, as we move forward. So that happens this week, I believe. Two days this week. So. Okay. So anything else? Christine has a check. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We've got three checks passing. Yeah. Lutheran's a single guy. Oh, Lutheran's a Should we give it to her? Okay. okay. Moving on. <coughs> okay, the first on our agenda, or second, I guess, is Fedco. Good evening. about the needs of Kiwana, and we identified that the current water treatment plant basically is a well coming out of the ground, they put chlorine into it, and there is high concentration of iron that is carried throughout the system. The other impact that we identified was there's heavy arsenic that is located in the water system in Kiwana. So with that, we drilled down into the funding avenues to see what we could do to help eliminate the arsenic and the iron in the system. But we also found that there was high mang manganese in the water as well. Arsenic and manganese are health and safety issues. So with that, we proposed uh, installing a filter treatment plant, and that was what our funding was focused around is how do we eliminate the uh, health and safety issue in the community, but also make the water aesthetically clean moving forward. Um, and also this is an economic driver. No one wants rusty water uh, in their sinks, their toilets, washing their clothes. 
come to find out, the, uh, the project uh, also included lead service removal. Everyone's familiar with uh, that service line and the attention after Flint, Michigan, on removing lead services in the community. Um, as we drilled down and we looked at those funding avenues, we identified that uh, we were able to get uh, total project costs of 6.6 .6 million, and we were able to get six million dollars in grant funding for the community. So this allocated an expense uh, for the community to go into a loan of 600000 which doesn't seem like much, but with the customer base that's based in Kiwana, that's a significant increase to their overall cost compared to what they're currently at. Um, which brings us to the point that we found these $6 million of grant funding. We found that a great avenue to resolve the health and safety issues that are currently occurring in Kiwana, but also stage up the community for aesthetically clean water moving forward. Um, the other avenue we looked at is also is fire protection, which is always a concern. Um, with that, um, Kiwana says yes, we want to accept that. With me today is Duran Collins, he's the board president, and the project engineer, uh, Andrew Robarge. Uh, we're here to ask the uh, commissioners for a $500,000 short-term low interest loan or zero interest loan for the community. What this will do is help eliminate a bond, or a bond anticipated note, which they call a band. So we're anticipating that that cost for the community is around $45,000. Um, this loan would basically cover the overall design and of the, uh, the facility and also any incidental uh, costs associated moving that project over closing with the Indiana Financial Authority uh, through the state revolving loan program. We anticipate this short-term interest loan to be basically paid back in April of 2024. Um, I provided the commissioners with a basically um, agreement, an uh, internal local cooperation agreement that has occurred in other communities throughout the state through your review. And it basically, it basically outlines the responsibility of the, uh, the community to pay back the, uh, the, uh, the loan and basically helps establish the timeline for that completion. So what we're asking for today is basically for the, uh, the commissioners to review our request and we're asking for that 500,000. I think it's, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but if, if this all goes through, we sign the contract and then they take it to the council tomorrow night, is that how it goes? Yeah, we'll have to go to council for the moment. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what we're anticipating. If yep. this goes through and you, you, the commissioners are in agreement, we would like to, we are scheduled to be in front of the uh, council tomorrow evening. Yeah, I think it's a great, I'm just really pleased that you secured six months yeah. of the yeah. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. And it started with your money that you gave it down. Government money. Well, just mention yeah, money. Save money for for a bigger project. You leverage that money. I mean, that makes yeah. it really happen. That's what, that's that's what it was intended for. Yeah. Yeah. And Brian, that's the whole intent. Is yeah. you look at uh, those funds and you want to leverage it into a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And this is a perfect example of uh, coming in. Um, I am a grant administrator. I do look at all the avenues associated with trying to find funding both through the state revolving fund, USDA, OCRA, and then we narrow down on the needs of the community. In this situation, Kiwana clicked a lot of those buttons, and they've done very well. Very happy. Another one of the ways to help Kiwana is a great way to be able to do it. We appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm all for it, so I, yeah, I, I think we all are. I guess I understand the motion to approve, I mean, it's got, obviously got to have to go to the council tomorrow night, but so, so how does that work? It goes to council, and then we approve it, to, or we say we're for it, and if they go along with it, then we come back and sign the contract later, or do we sign I it now? Or? I don't know if it's mm -hmm. uh, the council. Uh, you guys it. have to sign it, so. Uh, 
this, this is not. This is a, a redacted example that uh, uh, for the commissioners to look at, but also for the uh, the. Uh, County attorney to review to basically finalize the agreement. And can't we say, can't we make a motion and yes. approve it and then sign it later after the council agrees to it? Then we can come back and sign it yes. without going through a meeting. Am right. I correct on that? Yes, as long as it meets. Okay. So we want I can't make a motion that we could grant the $500,000 uh, for the council's uh, approval and per uh, county attorney approving the contract that will be presented. So, Second. Any other questions from anybody? I hear you not all there. A motion carries through there. Thank you for the effort that you're helping. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mike, any? Yeah, I'm just going to bring up quickly on um, the uh, Thursday, just coming Thursday the 26th, <coughs> we have a teleconference uh, with the housing group. Now, this coming Thursday or not? Well, whatever it is. <laughs> okay, you have to confuse me. So, okay. I was okay. nine days down. <laughs> I'm about two months behind at this point. Okay, Thursday the 26th. Uh, Thursday, the October 26th, there's going to be a, a conference call. And we're going to, uh, at the housing group, we're going to be talking about the uh, next steps in the housing authority, which will be our housing study, which will actually be toward bringing in. Uh, partners to look at uh, actual contractors and sites and things like that. We're actually getting, finally getting down to business okay. the way it should be. Um, I'll get you all a link onto that one because I think everybody, it's as teleconference <coughs> can also be on that. I'll get the council the same thing too. I think everybody ought to be on this. Another time of day? Uh, one to two. Not one thirty, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's an inside joke there. <laughs> um, okay, the other thing that, and this is actually really kind of crucial, I'm gonna take a second and explain this. Um, as you know, I belong to a regional group and we're going into the next phases for the READY program and such. This is not part of the READY program. Uh, I'll explain ready for a second is we are at the point of uh, we had a meeting the other day and put down the wishes the wants of all the attendees um, those are being collated right now and in the next couple of days week so uh, we'll be getting another list of what uh, the program is all about what the types of programs are this time um, we have quite a number I was reading through the list and uh, uh, I've seen some pretty neat ideas for it and so uh, once they're collated and once they're together then I'll circulate all that out to you too. The other thing, the last thing and I'll just take a few minutes here is the regional group is um, and the state of Indiana, I'll give them that much credit, <coughs> has finally decided to uh, create a new definition of economic development in the state. And they finally decided that farming is actually an industry. And so they have created something called the North Central Indiana Regional Agricultural Strategy. Um, I've given you the handouts, the initial handouts. There's uh, a pile of more information <coughs> that will come available to you. We really do need to work on this, be part of this. Um, this is about getting agricultural uh, permits and uh, uh, zoning, rezoning, things like that, all in order so that we can go after the right kind of industry. The one example that was made to us was um, Marshall County, one of their bigger cracks is cucumbers. And recognizing that you don't go after any other process except pickling industry type of thing, production. And so that's just common sense. That's what this is all about. But you want to have your zoning in place and the permitting and processes in place and whatnot. So we will be working with you. I'll be bringing this back to you guys to work with and the city council, county council, because um, it's it's going to be it's a pretty big project. The the way I'll explain it to you is how big it is is 
in the 80s, uh, we went from economic development being bringing in industry to community development, which um, is quality of life. There was a lot of resistance to that at the time. It finally became normal. This is the third step. This is, this is recognizing a business that is really an industry and it's important to central Indiana. It's important to us. And this will uh, help put us on the map. And um, besides being between the factories, this will be another avenue of economic development. <coughs> That's just an information piece. There'll be more. And we'll get together and have a conversation at some point. So, uh, well, when we was at the ready meeting, we talked to Stevie Ray, Stephen Ray, and he was wondering, uh, Randy Sutton was our liaison. He was on their their regional board and he was on the yeah. local ready. Am I saying that right? You're saying that right. And, and he was wanting another representative. Uh, you know, we had a council last time. We was thinking about Pete. I don't know if anybody's. That'd be great. I mean, am I, am I right on that? You're right on this, yeah. Because yeah. we, we need somebody out of the council or from the county representative. I'm not going to speak for him, but I think the mayor elect is going to, or to be elect is going to uh, sit on there. We've had this conversation. Um, there's going to be there's myself. There's community, uh, the community foundation is represented. Uh, the school in through Jana Vance is represented, and we just need that one final individual to complete that team that will actually carry all this through. And uh, if you guys want to recommend Pete, I recommend that too. Um, of course, that's for tomorrow. <laughs> but uh, it's all it's all up to you. If he's willing to do the job for no pay. <laughs> 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 sort of like me on the redevelopment. So, uh, and it, it probably is a council decision. Not yeah. Yet, but but oh, I just want to make sure our recommendation is if you go. But I would make right. a recommendation out to the council so that they know that. And then that that completes the entire team. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Nope. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Okay. I guess we'll. Uh, I've got the 908 Conservancy. Uh, we need to reread the resolution and sign some some documents again to update it. This is going to be run back through to help them with their uh, grant that they're looking for down in uh, down Lake for their uh, wastewater treatment plant. So we have resolution authorizing application of submission to local match commitment. Resolution 1016023. It's a resolution of the County Board of Commissioners of Fulton County, Indiana, authorizing the submittal of the CDBG Water Infrastructure Planning Grant application to the Indiana Office of <coughs> Community and Rural Affairs and addressing related matters. Whereas the Board of Commissioners of Fulton County, Indiana recognizes the need to maintain a sound and efficient water infrastructure for all county residents. And whereas the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974 as amended authorizes the Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs to provide grants to local units of government to meet the housing and community development needs of low and moderate income persons. And whereas the Board of Commissioners of Fulton County, Indiana have conducted or will conduct public hearing prior to the submission of an application to the Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs, said public hearings to assess the housing, public facilities, and economic needs of its low and moderate income residents. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners of Fulton County, Indiana, that one, the Fulton County Board of Commissioners President is authorized to prepare and submit an application for grant funding to address the need for a study of the water for the wastewater and stormwater systems located in Niagara South Mud Lake Conservancy District and execute, execute and administer uh, a resilient grant, grant, including requisite general administration and project management contracts and agreements pursuant the regulations of the Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs and the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development. Two, the Fulton County Board of Commissioners hereby commits the requisite, the requisite local funds in the amount of $6,480 
in the form of cash from the Diana South Budley Conservancy District Operation and Maintenance Fund as matching funds for said program. Such commitment can be contingent upon receipt of CBBG funding from the Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs. Document Board of Commissioners of Fulton County, Indiana, 10 16 2023. Like I said, this is, uh, we did this a month or two ago. We're <coughs> reading this so we can resubmit this application. Is there any other questions? I'd entertain a motion then to uh, approve resolution uh, 1016 Second. Do I have any questions for the public? Okay. Hearing that all there, that motion carries 3 0. We have uh, department updates. There was two resolutions there. Those are two. There is. Right. Okay. This is another part of the same process. It's resolution authorizing the <coughs> local match commitment. It's resolution 1016-2023A. Resolution of the Fulton County Board of Commissioners of Fulton County, Indiana, authorizing the use of funds. Whereas the Fulton County Board of Commissioners of Fulton, Indiana, is applying for a community development block grant, a water infrastructure planning grant, from the Indiana Office of Rural, Community and Rural Affairs. And whereas the Fulton County, Indiana, will provide all required local matching funds. Be resolved by the uh, Fulton County Board of Commissioners of Fulton. In that, the form of water infrastructure planning grant award, the Fulton County Board of Commissioners shall provide matching funds in the amount of $6,480. These funds shall be delivered from the following the Niona South Public Conservancy District Operation and Maintenance Fund. All funds are available and committed as local match for the water infrastructure planning grant. Their money is coming from also from our ARPA funds that we gave them, so they're working with. We're working on magic too, so appreciate that. So, do we have any questions on that? I entertain a motion to approve resolution 1016203A. So, go ahead. So, move. Second. Do I have any comments from the public? Okay. All in favor? Motion carries through. Okay. All right. Thanks, Christine. Okay, John, you got it, there you are. There you go. <coughs>
for 2.3971 cents. Um, premium diesel X4 on road ultra low sulfur is $3.3111. Furnace oil by a thousand gallons or less is 3.6141 and 20,000 gallons or less of uh, premium diesel X4 off road ultra low sulfur is 3.3141. But the third bid is so much over market price that for the furnace equipment, is that correct? Yeah, that's what we've done. How, how much is it over the, 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 the guy along there? It's got to be so much over market price, right? <coughs> Six cents. Base price is rack price uh, plus eight cents. Eight rate. cents. Okay. okay. Uh, the
Um, community crossing projects, uh, I talked to Tenant Brown, uh, they're going to start milling on the 26th and they're going to start paving on the 30th. Which one they're starting? 450. So at least that's what I'm just going to watch And just for people who are here, don't know that's fine. 450 north from old 31 to 375 west. Yes. We're going to mill and repave that. That's one of our community crossing grants that we received. And then 700 north from old 31 to 250 east. So the uh, on the river bridge up there on old 31 north, that uh, was up there last week, and it was doing that hydroblasting on that. That was pretty neat to <coughs> operation of water system. Put it off all the old concrete. Uh, they're going to do the over pour the concrete overlay tomorrow, and then next week they're going to do the wind walls. So they're setting the frames. <coughs> so they're moving along pretty quickly. They're ahead of schedule. They're still looking November eighth or something like. They're they think they'll be a little ahead of that actually, yeah. but okay. yeah. Well, today I get that home going. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> on you, a general tip. So, um, I did send you some information on an asphalt fuel order. Um, we, was, we rented one. Ours that went down uh, this fall. Uh, we rented one. Uh, we we was pretty impressed with it. Uh, this one was a, what was that? A twenty sixteen or so? I think it was, John. Information. Uh, 2015, um, it was $70,000. Uh, he was kind of interested in purchasing it. A new one just like it, with all the bells and whistles, was $250,000. This one, the way it was set up, would be $200,000 brand new. Did you say he's going to take the rent off of it? Is that on top of the 70 or is that with No, the they would take the rent off of it. That'd be another 5,500. Okay, so. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was a question I always ask. How are you going to pay for it? We've got the money. We can take it out a couple of different times. So, approach it. You guys are okay with it. First council. We gave seventy thousand for the world that we got. It was in 1997. We'd like to keep it just as a backup. For it's a little lighter for some of the lighter work. Mm -hmm. good. Yeah, it's yeah. Still usable. Let's see what they have to say. Get hard yeah. parts for it. Kind of doesn't exist. Yeah. Do the council suit this up? The other next thing I had, I have a title sheet here that I need to get signed. And this is for Old 31 South, a repaving project down, down there, in the federal aid. Uh, yes, I need to have this signed. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, what would you say again? Yeah, uh, this is for Old 31 South. Yeah. We're, we're signing here. Do you mean? This is for the plans. The plans, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's supposed to start. That's that we'll to take that out for bid in January. Okay. All right. Okay. I can give your signatures. If I need Christina's, you can come out and stay here after we get it. Um. And then uh, next thing I have is a financial commitment letter. That we'll need signatures from tonight. And tomorrow night I'll have to go after the council. But uh, we're going after, uh, for the third time, uh, federal aid on Old 31 North from the River Bridge up to State River 10. Um, and this will be for the, the 2030 project. It's a call that goes out this November. Uh, but the total of this project, and when I say project, this would be repaving. This would be a deep mill, and this would be milling down to the concrete, six inches, 
and resurface in it, but it would also be expanding through the most dangerous areas from like 450 north up through Glaze Hill, past the Geneva Center to the top of the hill and extending out for the, I call it buggy lanes or alternate transportation lanes, bicycles, buggies, uh, trying to make it a little safer through the, the total of this project would be uh, 8.1 million. Uh, we'd be requesting 6.5 million in federal aid, but our match would be 1.6 million. So, uh, would this be a financial commitment letter letting in about know that we're willing to make that match? So. But, um, did you have a funding, you did have a funding mechanism, you're going to take that out of the wheel tax? Sir tax, yes. Sir tax. That's how we finance that 431 salary in the past. Now what I'm hoping, and I don't know if you know, this is hoping, is uh, when we go after, when we bid here this January, is we get a little boost from MDOT on the 31 South and the money we've saved there we can throw towards this, but that's all hope. Mm -hmm. um, and I throw that towards this as part of our match. But like I say, that's the but uh, otherwise, yeah, it'd have to go tax or tax, save back a little bit each year, and it'd take uh, 327,000 each year over the course of five years to save that. Well, you've done a good job over the years. We, we had some statistics, statistics <coughs> recently that you've given too that you know the, the community crossings, many of all the roads that we're doing is coming from the, the match on the. Uh, the wheel tax. Um, so it's, it's been a, you've done very well in the match that to get us to work on our roads. And I really appreciate all our work you're doing. Bring a lot more yeah. money back to our county yeah. and get yeah, the road right. Basically, what we've done is taken half of our wheel tax matched it with community crossings, and the other half has been matched with federal aid projects. So that's what we've done. Mm -hmm. So, like you said earlier, with your other grants, we leverage money to, for bigger money. It's worked well. Yep. Okay, then I'd like to a motion to approve the uh, federal funding application uh, letter of commitment. Uh, it was so, so moved. Second. Uh, any questions? Public? Hearing none, all favor? Motion carries. Here we go. Then, um, last. Thing I have for you tonight, I uh, have two uh, potential employees I'd like to talk to you about. Um, one is uh, Randy Miller. Uh, he works for Travis out the Sheriff's Department. Uh, he's wanting to transfer and come off the highway. So I talked to Travis about it. I guess he's sitting here now. <laughs> I didn't realize Randy was here. But, uh, he's been wanting to come out to the highway. Fill a position. So we can get your blessing on that. Yeah. 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 Been a good employee, hasn't he, Travis? He ain't had no trouble, nothing. Yep. He showed up, so we can't talk about him. Can't talk about him. He's here. He can talk about him. I don't care. He can talk about him in front of me. Yeah. That's what they all want. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one, uh, Calvin Holloway. Uh, he's worked for us part time in the winter before. Uh, we'd like to make it possible to use him a little bit this winter part time. Uh, you know, he's a past employee, so he's not on the the rolls right now, so we have to get your blessing and use him again. He's a new one. That's all I have tonight. Okay. Thanks, John. Thank you. Okay, Kathy, treasure anything? I do, but I'm going to bring it up under new business. Okay, Travis, sure. I just got a few things. Um, I did email out the reports this morning. Is any questions on the new building or anything? Um, with John talking about Randy, to go ahead and post the animal control position. Is it good with that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
um, we had Jake at graduation on Saturday at the sheriff's office. Very well attended. We probably had 70, 75 people there, service providers, family members, uh, prosecutor's office representative probation. So really good turnout. Um, so thank you to everybody that, that made that possible. We're looking to start in the next class the first of the year. So um, we're going to try pushing two classes through, the two 13-week classes through the new year. So, um, we picked up our last Tahoe last week for 23. <coughs> Cops gear getting set up. The one that's already up there, I was assured would be pushed out the next three weeks. So um, and then this last one, he said, would be done definitely by the end of the year. So um, we're still kind of in limbo on what we can get for next year. Um, with strike and everything else, we're not sure what kind of production it's going to look like. So uh, we're going to try getting our mittens on to them for next year. So um, with that, we've been decommissioning some vehicles. Um, we've got a uh, Ford Explorer, 2015 Ford Explorer. We'd like to take over to auction with the Crown Vic. If you guys are okay with that, it's a, it's in the service life. Um, so if you guys are okay with that, we'll take that over to auction. We also have a 2015 Ford F-150. Spoke with uh, EMA. They're interested in that um, as far as that EMA vehicle. Spoke with Craig, Craig spoke with Gail. Um, so <coughs> if you guys have permission, we'd like to just transfer that to, to EMA. Um, so to send that to auction. Um, it, uh, it's at its end of its life for patrol use, but it would be ideal for them. So, yeah. Um, we had 93 inmates this morning. Uh, about a third of those were not our inmates. Inmates were getting paid for. Um, last month, we invoiced $76,000 for inmates that weren't ours between the uh, marshal services and other counties in the DOC. And I think that is all I have. Unless you guys have any questions, I already talked to you about the need for the maintenance building, so I'll bring that up with uh, council tomorrow night. Just yeah. make sure we're all on the same page. I know Chad's working with some contractors to get some estimates put together for that. So, okay. anything for me? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, we've got uh, Jerry Corbin. some information, some data and statistics. We've been quite busy uh, lately. Um, just to let you know what's happened so far in 2023, we've had uh, 57 total families that we've served. Of that, 32 men and 25 ladies have passed. Our county, I spoke with um, our vital registrar today, uh, Carrie Randstad, and she informed me that we've had 157 deaths in Fulton County totally for this year um, that have been reported as of today. 79 males and 78 females. So our office is actually still investigating about 33% of the deaths. And that's right about where we are, it seems to be the last <coughs> several years. Um, the manner of death, we've had uh, one undetermined, 48 natural deaths six accidental and we've got two that we're waiting on because we actually had a couple of autopsies um, about a week ago so we're waiting on the outcomes for that we'll find out something probably it takes a month to six weeks so uh, our procedures for this year we've had a total of eight autopsies uh, 13 labs that we've done out at Woodlawn that'd be like uh, troponin the d-dimer for uh, pulmonary embolism. We also do have done several glucose lately. So that all helps us in uh, showing evidence of you know, what exactly occurred. And then there's been uh, 11 toxicologies that we've performed and sent away. And then automatically with an autopsy, toxicology occurs and there's been eight of those. So we've had a total of 19 for the year. Um, 
that's a little bit about that. I wanted to let you know that on November 8th, uh, Margo's getting together a, a group that are coming from IU Kokomo. They're forensic radiologist tech students, and they're coming out to our uh, beautiful forensic center and the detention center classroom to get a little bit of education on radiology, compare and contrasting uh, live uh, radiology with forensic. So we're excited about that opportunity to host them. Um, also, just a little bit, uh, Gail and I collaborated on the Duke Energy Grant. Haven't heard anything totally yet. We're very optimistic, but, and it sounds good, but we don't know for sure. And that'll be utilized for LEPC for our, uh, this year we're having a tabletop coming up um, in December on the 13th. And then next year we're going to plan a session where we do actually in person and we're going to be out on the roll uh, doing an actual live. So that's very exciting and we're just gaining momentum and keeping things moving and hopefully keeping Fulton County safe and being proactive to make sure things are done. Sounds good, Jerry. Questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. So I'm coming to you in reference to the volunteer group and communications. So in the last week, uh, we've been to a few meetings. You can say that. And one of the things is uh, the volunteer fire departments come to you and the council for lit money, a percentage of the lit money. So talking to a few of you, um, they said something about meeting with the ARPA group. And um, I don't know how you feel about that, but since the SHSP grant was denied, um, they're going to need something because they're not in operation. Now, some of them have set some of that money that you gave them um, last year aside, and are getting ready to buy radios. But I do have um, some quotes, and we're testing some different radios that are less um, expensive um, than the Motorola or Kenwood. So we're going to try out Tate's and Harris radios. And I believe uh, Akron is uh, testing out the tape radios. I will tell you we've had the uh, transmitter receivers on the tape side for a um, minimum of 12 years, and they've been good, pretty fantastic at the base station. So um, I'm coming to you to ask me where to go next. Okay, so you're talking 800 megahertz. Yeah, the 800. So they really want simplicity and something that's easily trained because it is a volunteer group and they come and go, but they're vital um, with the ambulance service and so forth today. So um, the SHSP grant was 150000 I'd like to purchase 30 radios and maybe offset a little bit with the uh, 91 funds if needed. Um, to make sure they each station gets at least five radios and we have five for the uh, volunteers out at EMA that go out on the roadway so meticulously. You are thinking 150,000 or? Yes. What we started, we were talking about 200,000, but I feel that if we can keep it around 150 uh, to 200 or whatever or see what we can come up with. Like I said, that was with buying Motorola radios at 25. We were meeting our threshold um, with a certain series, so I'd like to see where we come in with the tape radios, and, you know, what funds we can use for those, but this is something or an idea um, conjuring up talking with a council member and a couple of those and bring it to your attention. Of course, it's always councils idea where they pay for that. Oh, right, so that's, right. That's their, uh, just my opinion, I don't like using the ARPA money for that. I like to leverage the ARPA money to bring more money back in. That's, sure. that's what I think it was a dead for, but that's, that's their decision. I, I, I mean, like I said, it's a council decision. The host would be a great place to take that money. Okay. It's not taxpayer money. It's, you know, it's, it's like, like Rick said, we're, 
kind of a roll with the circle button right from it. Yeah. Get everybody helping so you know, we can keep that moving they got forward. got ready cue coming out mm -hmm. and we're going to have to have a match mm -hmm. somehow and that's, yep. it's just nice to have it put back. And that's right. That, mm -hmm. That's just my, it's going to be council's decision. Uh, how they I mean, I'm it. totally for you getting it. <coughs> yeah, we're so, part of the So moving forward, I think if we find like a cache of radios <coughs> uh, that we purchase from Possibly an idea would have them, I mean, either buy it as a group or that they don't care for those, that they submit a lot of fun and um, submit that to us so we can pay yeah, for you it. Lost, it's, for the you lost radios. Either. Yeah, but if they yeah. don't like those, they send them that to our team. Yeah, if they don't like it or oh, got gotcha. one bunch okay. that just doesn't okay. care for those, that we only allot for a certain amount and the claim is paid for radios only. Their choice, so if they don't like that, we as a trade, that's it. So, um, we've got to work together here somehow. Yeah. I think we can work through it. Yeah. Other than that, I don't really have anything. I did post on uh, the 91 position, assess position on Indeed. Okay, when was his retirement? Refresh my memory. Uh, this Friday. This Friday? This Friday. Yeah, so they'll be having to carry in when we do interviews. Well, that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I can't leave stuff out. So. Okay. But uh, that'll be Friday. A lot of people will be able to come and go. So, okay. Good. with that being said, but uh, it was posted on Indeed, and they're coming in tenfold. I didn't realize how many people were on Indeed. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I'll just say it. <laughs> I'm not saying qualified, but there's a lot of it. 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 Okay. We have uh, the GIS. Limited use agreement. Okay, you guys had a chance to read that. That's, uh... Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was trying to get the name here. It's uh, no Commonwealth Associates are looking for a uh, hey. <laughs> you know, shape file for the uh, courses. You guys are giving you dirty luck. I know. <laughs> so, um, I'd entertain a motion to approve that uh, use of our GIS files. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries 3 0. That's how they use that to be able to get <coughs> the extra day at Christmas. Oh, yeah, that's right. They did. Okay. Instead of, <coughs> instead of <coughs> earlier okay. in the year. Moving that's down. how they do it for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Okay. That's the state schedule. Okay. Board appointment and three people uh, 
Number names put in. Do I have a recommendation? Yes, I just want to make a comment. We had three great people turn in their names, uh, uh, but I would recommend Harry Webb. I'll second that motion. Okay. Uh, all in favor, Harry Webb. That motion carries three up. Okay. You guys had a chance to look the minutes over for the October second meeting. Okay. No changes or anything are any good. We entertain a motion to approve the minutes for October 2nd. So moved. Second. All in favor? The motion carries 3 0. Okay. Did we? We approved it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're getting going both ways here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't sign that yet. Thank you. Okay. Negotiated um, in the prior years, we were paying nine hundred fifty thousand nine hundred fifty dollars per building because of an annex building in the courthouse, um, and he's got a contract before us for four hundred thirty dollars per per month. That was nine hundred fifty dollars per month. So, you guys, any questions on that? You guys had to give it this week ago. Mm -hmm. so, yep, he did. Yeah. Yep. So, I, I, he got the price down. Better down. I'll give you credit. Yeah, he's negotiated. He's been working really hard yeah. for it. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay, I entertain a motion then to um, enter to this contract with uh, TKE. So Second. All okay. Motion carries three out. Okay. I guess I had a chance to put the claims over. Any questions, concerns? Mm -hmm. got the up correct. Yeah, we got the updated one, I think. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I have uh, an insurance claim docket here. The disbursements of 921 to 927 of $5,369.83. We have an insurance claim docket 914 to 920, $27,790.43. Insurance claim docket 105 <clears throat> to 1011, $5,729.36. Six. <coughs> Insurance claim docket October fees $43,002.74. Uh, insurance claim docket. Disbursements of 928 to 10 4 of $6,714.89. Okay. Yeah. Insurance, I guess. Insurance claim that the uh, disbursements of 97 to 913, $4,256.06. We have payroll for 10 $261,308.79 with a payroll deduction of $92,051.39. We have utilities for $24,334.02. October 16th miscellaneous claims, um, which is just office supplies and all kinds of just uh, average everyday stuff that we can use here of
transfers to the treasurer, $320 from dues to continuing ed and mileage. That the assessor, $100 from dues to legal ed. <coughs> Assessor $500 for maintenance equipment to printing. Uh, circuit court $426 for mental evaluations to law books. Superior court $350 for postage. Witness fees. I think they're short. Uh, the uh, Superior Court here is for paying a tripper. She's here. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Conversation with Rick and Dave about storage space. <laughs> Same thing I've complained about before. Um, it's getting harder to get things over to the courthouse, and then when we do get things over there, I've got stuff over there ready to be destroyed. The clerk's office is working on that for me, but the minute that space opens up, court snatches it from us. But it's in, in, in all reality, it is getting harder to find ways to get boxes over there without begging the highway department and everybody else. So I was talking to them about storage space, which we do not have in this building. But we have a beautiful little lot right over here. And I talked to them about possibly, can we look at building a building, a simple building, not anything fancy. And so in the course of the conversation, said something about if we did like a 20 by 40, that we could wall off one end of it and put an overhead door and Carrie could have it for maintenance to have a place to store his because we know this building out here that he uses is, as he told me the other day, the mice are eating him out of house and home out of, in that building. But none of everything else he's got stored in his office over in the courthouse. So I told these guys I was gonna bring it. I talked to Heather. <laughs> Heather said we could go as well as 30 by 60 on that lot, and I'm like, we don't need 30 by 60. I mean, where's the money going to come from? I don't know. Well, I think it's something. It's a conversation I wanted to start just to have. Yeah, space. I appreciate that. We, we do have a story, document stories shortage here for the courts and yeah. ourselves. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we need a climate control or something. So if we're going to do it, we might as well get it big enough that the courts, because the bell towers, things about the max down on the weight you can put in that thing. And, uh, so yeah. it's something we can look into. Figure um, out how to fund it out of it. But we can start looking into that because it's something we've talked about for a few years here. We need to get on it. So I appreciate you bringing that up. Kind of thank mm -hmm. you. So, anybody else have any new business options? Yes. I'd like to talk about. Get my little box out. Yeah. yeah. State your name, please. Lauren Lamer. Okay. I'm over there in God's country at the far <laughs> edge of the. I live on 475 North. Okay. Right off of 1100. Uh, west. I I'm building a new house. I sold my old house. It lays between two hills. 
and every time we have a hard rain, it washes out. We was wondering if we could at least get half a mile blocked up. Is that that's a gravel? Is that a gravel road? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Up until probably 2006, it was basically a dirt road. So. Well, I, I, we can meet with uh, the highway, kind of look at it, and see what. Well, I'm not sure what it takes to get. Have to look into it. Yeah. Probably, so now I'm just guessing if he does anything, it'd probably be a chip and seal, which would be you know, oil and stone. Yeah. But it should keep it from washing out. Yeah, that would be when great. Out, when the washes out, it's coming across, does it, from higher ground on one side to the other side? <coughs> yes, it comes out of the field. And I had put a 12 inch culvert into the driveway and dropped it down and run it down to a pond. It isn't big enough to handle the big range. And when it comes out of that field, it just goes across the road and it always washes out the north side of the road. I'm trying to think, do you live third to county line or, or is it on around the corners to the county line? Is that where you live or, or not? Uh, I am uh, three quarters of a mile from the county line. Yeah. 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 But I mean, on that road, is it right at the county line? No, it's about half mile. Okay. This way, okay. east. Okay. All right. All it right. does wash a little bit at the county line, but it ain't that bad. And then come up a quarter of a mile, there's another wash up when they have a half of the rain. But so roughly, you'd have to do a half mile to get you. Yes, from the east to the west. From the we'll talk to town about it. Can't promise you anything to the point. But We'll look into it. I figured I'd get my two cents in here yeah. before yeah. next year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll have John look at it. We'll yeah. Okay. Discuss it. I appreciate it. We'll talk yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Any business? Or anything good for the cause? Okay. Hearing that, I have a motion to recess. So moved. Second. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.